Hi, I'm Tim. Today, we're renovating our home office. We're gonna build a couple of floating desks. So stick with us, and I'll show you how I did it. Before we got started, we needed to repaint and add a new shelving unit to our living room. With the help of my daughter, we got this done in a matter of a few days. We picked up a few cabinets from our Habitat for Humanity resale shop. But unfortunately, one of them was locked and there was no key. Simple, we just drilled out the lock to free the drawers. First grab a drill bit smaller than the diameter of the actual locking mechanism, drill completely through it, then come back with a larger diameter drill bit like shown and drill out the remaining part of the lock. Now once the lock is drilled out, just use a screwdriver and pop the lock open. Then the drawers will open freely. Now it's time to prep the cabinets for paint. We have to remove all rust and any imperfections or stickers that are left on from the cabinet. I'm using a coarse wire brush to remove all of the rust. Then I'm taking a sander just to rough up all the surfaces that we're going to paint. Now I'm using Rust-Oleum spray paint. I'm sure you can use other kind, but this is what I had on hand. I prepped my cabinets, I taped off the little locking button, and then I sprayed. Back to forth motion, let the sides dry, then rotating the cabinet as needed and painting the other surfaces. The surfaces you really have to worry about are the ones that are going to be shown. Some of the sides and in the front. Now I'm going to dress these filing cabinets up by making a little picture frame around the front of the filing cabinets using some bead molding. Now we set up a stop block on our miter saw and just cut 45 degree angles going from one side to the other side to get the same lengths for each piece. Then just repeat these cuts for how many pieces you need depending on how many filing cabinets you have. While dressing up the front of the filing cabinets, I picked up these small furniture feet to put on the bottom of the filing cabinets just to pick them off the ground a little bit. Now let's just paint everything. A couple of coats of the same kind of spray paint we used on the front of the cabinets, as well as the pieces of molding that we just cut for the fronts. Now for the feet, we need to drill some holes in the bottom. I just measured evenly in each corner, made a hole appropriate for the size peg that each feet has, and drill it through using the vacuum to help clean up the mess and not scatter the metal pieces all around my shop. Now we just have to assemble the feet onto the cabinet. I just screw them right in the holes that we drilled. Once they're somewhat snug, I'm going to take a flat washer, a locking washer, and a nut to secure them in place. Once we get everything together, I'm going to come back with a wrench and tighten them all up. Just hand tight was good enough. These things aren't moving anywhere. Now let's secure our picture frame. We're going to use some crazy glue or CA glue. I'm using my combination square that's got the exact distance I want from the top, which is the exact same I'm going to have from the bottom. Once that is set, clamp it into place and then glue on the sides. These are all 45 degrees. Once I match up the corners, everything should align up pretty square. So I'm not going to clamp the sides so I can get the bottom on perfect. Once we get the sides on, I can move to the bottom and secure that the same way. Now this is going to take a few minutes to dry, so leave it out of the way so no one's going to bump it. And once it's dry, we can go on to the next step. Now with the filing cabinets done and in place, I'm going to grab my level line and mark where a ledger board is going to go to help support our floating desk. Once I find a level, level with our filing cabinet, I'm just going to mark it right on the wall with a pencil. Then with the stud finder, we'll find out where all the studs are going to be. Now we most likely know there's going to be one probably between these two outlets, so let's just double check. Once I find out where all the studs are, I just mark that on the wall so I know where to screw the screws when we hook up the ledger board. Now we just have to cut our ledger boards to length. We're going to have two long ones, one for each desk to go on the back wall. 
then we'll have two short ones that'll both be the same length that's going to hook onto the side of our bookcase or bookshelf. Now once we have our ledger boards cut to length, we're going to put some pocket holes into these ledger boards. This is what we're going to use to hold the desktop to the ledger board once we get everything completed. I put about four or five pocket holes in each of the ledger boards that go to the back wall. Then I put three more on the side ledger boards that are going to go into the side of our bookshelf. This should be plenty enough to hold everything together. Now our side ledger boards are going to go into the bookshelf itself. We're going to drill three larger holes into them. I've got both boards clamped together so the holes will be in the exact same spot. These holes are going to have carriage bolts which is going to secure the ledger board to the bookcase. So I just drill them together so I know everything's even and it looks nice and pretty. Alright, now we just have to stain. Now I'm using an old sock to apply and remove the stain. I use one to apply it, let it sit for however long you'd like to let it sit for. The longer it sits, the darker it will be. Then take another sock, or another whatever you're going to use, and wipe off the remaining residue. Do this until you got the desired darkness that you want of the stain. Now it's on to the construction of our actual desktop. I'm using white aspen that I picked up at the home store. This was on sale, actually clearance, so I couldn't pass up a great deal. I was going to use some other materials, but this worked better. They came in already big sheets. What I did is I bought several of them. It's not quite wide enough for our desk that we want, so I ripped one down and I'm going to join it to the other one, which I'm going to show you how I did here in just a second. Now we're going to join these two pieces of wood with pocket hole screws. So we just put our pocket holes, stagger them up and down the length of the board. Now we just apply some glue and smooth it out evenly along our joint prior to securing our pocket hole screws in. Now a couple of clamps to hold these two pieces together. Now we'll secure our pocket holes. Try to keep the two boards flush as much as possible so we have less sanding to do at the end. Go all the way down the row, one side then the other side. Make sure you maintain even pressure while you're putting in the screws. Now we need to cut our desk to length. Once the glue is dried, we're going to set up our straight edge, which is approximately 5 inches from the blade. So I'm cutting this the exact dimension that I want. Mark it up on the board. I have to say I'm really loving the rigid 18 volt uh, cordless series. This circular saw here, I just love it. It works great. It's one of my go-to tools in my shop. So if you're looking to get a new saw and you want cordless, I always recommend this one. In no way is rigid promoting or sponsoring my channel at all. Now let's mock up how it's going to look. I cut some more pieces for the trim to the front as well as some support pieces that go underneath. The stained pieces are our ledger boards. Now let's mock up how it's going to look. There's our front piece, our trim. Our filing cabinet is going to go right here. I'm going to cut out some more pieces that are add sub underneath support that's going to go the whole width of the desk right there. Now I apologize, I forgot to show that I did do more pocket holes along the front edge of the trim that's going to be secured right to the desk right now, as well as those support pieces. I put more pocket holes and secured them right directly to the desk. My hole drill kit. What I'm going to do is going to take the center, find out where I'm going to want my hole at. I already pre-measured where it's going to be. A little tap into wood to give us a starting point. Drill the pilot hole. Next, let's take some painter's tape and mark off where the hole is going to go. We're going to do this 
to try to reduce any tear out that could happen on either end. Do this for the top and the bottom. Now we just drill the hole. I like to drill partially way through the top, stop, come up through the bottom, through the pilot hole, and drill some of the way off the bottom so we reduce the amount of tear out. Then come back to the top and cut the rest of the way. Keep even pressure so we don't have any burning of the tool or the wood. Once you're all done, you should have a little cookie. Now just smooth everything flat from our joints to the top. Now when you apply the stain, go with the direction of the wood. Use one rag to apply the product. Let it sit for X amount of time, darker, longer the time. Then with your other rag, wipe off the remaining. And there we go. Now we're going to seal up the desk parts with the Minwax water-based polyacrylic protective finish. We're going to go with a clear matte finish. We're going to apply this with a natural bristle brush. Then let it dry. Package says let it dry for about two hours and then sand. So let's begin. We apply our product in thin coats, trying to go in the direction of the grain of the wood, going back and forth until we complete the entire project. Now, right now ready, when I completely coated away. the entire project, I like to come back with a slightly damp brush along the whole entire project from one side to the other side. This is to eliminate any potential bubbles or extra product sitting on the surface. If you get too much on the brush, just kind of wring it out in your can and then continue on. Once the product is dried, we want to come back and sand in between each coat. This will ensure that we get a nice smooth finish when we come back to do our final coat. Now while the final coat is drying, let's secure our ledger boards. We'll grab the appropriate one for which side we're working on, bring it right up to that line that we drew earlier. We're going to secure one of the wood screws right into the stud. Now utilizing a level just to make sure that our first mark was right, we're going to secure the other two into the stud. Now let's take some painter's tape and tape on the bookshelf where we're going to drill our holes through to attach that side ledger board. With the help of some clamps and a level, we can hold our side piece up perfectly level with our back ledger board. Now we can drill our holes for our carriage bolts to sit in. We already pre-drilled them on the board, so just follow the holes through the bookshelf. Now after we drilled all three holes, we're going to remove the board, remove the tape, and then we're going to hook it back up with our carriage bolts. As you can see, I pre-painted the ends of our carriage bolts to match our shelving unit. So we just take those, pass them through the hole from the inside. Once we have all three through the holes, we just take the ledger board and put it into place and secure it with our washers and nuts. Now we just hand tighten them all with our ratchet. Make sure you do not over tighten them because you will pull the carriage bolt through the wood of the shelf. Now let's see if all of my measurements were correct. This should fit perfectly snug against our filing cabinet and our bookshelf. Now let's secure our desk using our pocket hole screws. I'm using an inch and a quarter Craig pocket hole screws. We're going to put them all in the ledger board where we put our pocket holes all along the back ledger board and on the side ledger board that's against our bookshelf. There's also going to go a couple from our underneath support beams into the ledger board against the wall. Now I secured the desk underneath the filing cabinet also with some screws. I had to use these furring strips because my screws were too long. Now all we have to do is put our drawers into the cabinets. There we have it, our job is complete. We've got two floating desks. I have to say this has been my, one of my favorite projects to do so far. If you liked the video, give us a thumbs up. 
If you haven't subscribed, do so already so you don't miss any upcoming videos. Next week, we're going to build these shelves, and I'll show you what I did. I'm also on Facebook, so make sure you check us out there. Like always, thanks for watching.